Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by ExcelLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're gonna to take a look at how to make flowcharts in Excel. So I love the forums on my website, and today, uh, user Jeffrey said that he's looking for some suggestions for some good flowchart software. And there's lots of good software out there. Timothy recommended MindMeister. Alex recommended a few things. Me, I just use Excel. And then, of course, you know, Lars is like, all right, already waiting for the video. This was only two hours ago. And I'm like, OK, damn it. Now I, <laughs> I sat around playing with it and I didn't I never covered flow charting in my full Excel course. So I'm like, let's have some fun. I built several flow charts over the years using Excel. It's nice and simple. It's easy to do. And I'm going to show you how to do it right now. All right. So the basic shapes in most flow charts You've got the terminator, which is like the start or end of a process. You've got a process step itself, and then you've got a decision. And as you can see here, we've got a terminator to start it, a process, do some stuff, a decision, are you done? And then it ends with another terminator. I'll be back. No, 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 wrong terminator. Um, but these are the basic ones. There's tons of other symbols, especially if you're doing one specific to like uh, databases or programming. Or, I'm not going to get into all those. I'm just going to show you how to do the simple ones, put some connectors in there, and we'll have some fun. So the first thing we'll do is put a terminator in there for the start. So we'll go up to insert and then come over to shapes. And I'm not seeing shapes. That's because I got my window smaller because of recording, but if your window is a normal size, like mine usually is, you'll see shapes right there. See, if not, if you're dealing with a shrinky guy like me here, then you'll see it under illustrations and then shapes. That's right there. Now you'll see a ton of different shapes here and down here, you'll even see there's a flow chart section. All right, you could use any of these you want to. No one's, who, who's, gonna, who's gonna yell at you, right? Use a smiley face if you want to. But uh, the Terminator is an oval right there. If you, hold, if you hover over it, it'll tell you what it is. So click on that. And then I'll come in here and just draw myself a shape like so. Once you do that, you get the Shape Format tab pops up here on the ribbon. Of course, you could change the style right here. Drop it down. Pick from any of these. I'll pick that guy. And then we'll put some text on it. Double click. And we'll put in here Start like that. All right. I'm going to click off of it. Click on it again to highlight the whole thing. And I'm gonna go over to the Home tab. I'm gonna hit Center Horizontally and Center Vertically. Let's bold it, and then we can make the text bigger. Just like that, okay? Nice and easy. All right, how about a process, a rectangle? So again, Insert, Shapes, find a rectangle. You could use any rectangle. You don't have to go down to the thing, All right? Draw it over here, like so. I'm gonna format it. I like blue for these. Okay, same thing. Double click in here, right? Do stuff, click off it, and then we'll go to home, center it, bold it, make it bigger. Okay. Now, how do I connect these guys with a little arrow? Well, again, insert shapes. There's an arrow right there. You can use this guy if you want to. Click, and you could draw an arrow anywhere you want. I like to draw it out here first. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the endpoint, click and drag it and drop it on one of these dots that appear. All right, that's it creates what's called a connector then. See, do that and then grab this guy, do the same thing and drop it on there. Now, if this moves, look at that, it stays connected. The arrow follows it. Okay, and you could change the connector type to right click on it. Go to connector types. You can do a connector that's got an elbow, which... For this one, if you move it over here, you can see it makes it like an elbow. Or you can do a curvy one. All right, curved connector. See that? And the curved connector, you can click on this little dot here and draw how you want the connector to be. Okay, I'm just going to go back to a straight connector. Where are you? Right there. Okay, see that? By the way, I should mention, you can do the same thing with the same tools in... Word and PowerPoint. The benefit of Excel is that you're not limited by size. You can make this thing as big as you want to. And you can print it out just by zooming in and out. You can print as much or as little of it as you want to. Whereas with Word and PowerPoint, you're limited by the size of the document or the, the slide, of course. And you could take these that you make in Excel and just copy and paste them into the other ones too. Um, and of course, Microsoft Access, the redheaded stepchild of the Office family, does not have this stuff. 
So, but I, I can't really think of a time I've ever needed it in Access, but uh, it could come in handy, especially for like my genealogy database. This stuff would be nice. All right, let's add a decision in here. A yes or no. So again, insert, illustrations, shapes. The decision is the little diamond guy. I'm gonna put the diamond down. Now, so I don't have to go through and reformat the text with all those steps. What you can do is just click on one of these that you've already formatted, use the format painter and then paint on this guy and then just change the color, right? Just change the shape fill to what you want. So if you want like orange for that, but now you've inherited those text properties, right? Like that. And if you want to change the shape of the diamond, just do this, right? Or you can make the text smaller, whichever you prefer. All right, just like that. You can also eliminate the, there's a margin in here. Like you notice how if I want to do this, it, it shrinks it up. If you right click on this and go to format shape, go to text options, and then click this thing here that brings up the text properties, just set all these margins to zero. All right, and then you get rid of all that padding inside the shape. And now you can actually make this smaller like that. And you got more room in there to play. Okay. This one, I might go with black text, easier to read. Yeah, that's better. Let's make our connector, right? Copy and paste this guy, copy, paste. And then we'll just match it up to these dots like that. See? There we go. Now, the done usually is going to have multiple steps coming out of it. Yes, no, whatever. And um, you can use actual text if you want. Like you can insert and then go to illustration, shapes, and use a text box, this guy, and just draw it here, right? Put yes. All right. What I like to do is we'll bold that. We'll make it a little bit bigger like so. All right, it's got a border and a background around it, so I'm gonna click on that, go to shape format, make the shape fill, no fill, and the shape outline, no outline. Now it's completely transparent. Now you can set it here if you want to. And if you wanna make a line that goes from here to the yes, and then from the yes to something else, I like to make it two steps. So what I'll do is I'll go copy paste, right? I'll connect this end to here, I'll connect this end to the text box, right? And you just kind of align it where you want, like this. And then let's say you're done at this point, so I'll just copy the Terminator, copy, paste, put this over here. Okay, you're done. And then we'll connect that to this end. Or what you could do is you can connect it to the same point on this yes, and make this one so it doesn't have an arrowhead. Watch this, a little trick I do. So we're gonna go to shape outline, arrows, get rid of the arrowhead, so that's just flat. Now we'll take this guy, connect this to the same dot, and then connect this one over here. All right, and it, it's not 100% perfect, but it works. You can even make this a bit taller, like that. And there's, there's a lot of tricks you can play. Once you get it taller, you just gotta line it up right. See? It looks pretty good. But the, the benefit is it'll still stay connected. It'll, it'll move, right? Or what you can do, what I like to do is I like to use an X for no and a check mark for yes and make them like that. People can tell that's yes and no. I think it looks better. And we'll do that by just instead of the word yes in here, I'll put uh, an X for no. We'll make this box the right size for that X like that. Okay. And then we'll do a shape fill of red, maybe an outline of black. So, all right. Then we're going to click on this, right click and bring it to the front. So the line's behind it now. And then you just gotta make your line straight like that. See? I think on here, instead of a text box, I used a shape. That's why it's got those rounded edges. But you could do that, or you could use a circle, right? Insert um, shape. Let's do a circle for the check mark. Here's a circle. Draw a circle. All right. Let's make this guy green. So shape fill will be that shade of green. How do you get the check mark in there? Well, we're going to double click. So we got our blinking cursor. Okay. I'm going to go to insert and then symbols 
and pick symbol over here and just find the check mark. There's a square root sign. I think it's way down toward the bottom. Where did I find you? There's a check mark in here somewhere. There it is right there. And of course it's on my recently used symbols because I just played with it a few minutes ago before I recorded this video. So insert it and then close. There's your check mark. We're going to make it bigger. Like so let's get rid of those margins in there again. Right, right click format shape, text options, this thing, get rid of the margins. And then we can size that so it fits. Actually, let's do the centering stuff. There we go. And then there's your yes. See? And we'll take this, we'll put it over here. And then we'll just connect it up. I'll copy this guy, copy paste, connect you to here, connect you to there. I'll copy one with an arrow, copy paste, connect this to the top of that, connect this to that. Right click, let's make it a curved connector like so. Okay. Pretty cool, huh? Another cool thing you could do, you can hyperlink this stuff. So you can make a workbook that's got multiple pages with multiple flowcharts in it. So for example, let's make sheet two, right? More instructions. Okay, you can come over in here. Let's say you want to make one for help. All right, I'll just copy this box. Copy, paste. All right, we'll put this up here. This could be any of the shapes too. Actually, let's use uh, let's use this guy. Copy paste. I'm gonna put this over here. We'll make this the universal symbol symbol for help. We'll do a fill that's dark blue with a question mark in it. All right, and then we'll pick click on this guy. Right click, and oh, it's just off the screen. Let me move this down. Right click, right click, and go to link. All right, place in this document. You can link to a web page if you want to. You can create a new document. You can link to an email. I'm going to link to sheet two. You could define a, a named range, whatever. Hit OK. All right, now if the user comes over here, see they get the finger, click on it, it'll jump you to the next sheet or another entire flow chart. So you can make it interactive with just using these links, right? You can make it like a go back link on here and it'll bring it back there. See, that's pretty cool. You need to explain what do stuff is. Well, do stuff. There's a lot more options. You can you can reroute all the connectors. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. You can play with it. There's tons of different symbols. But this just gives you the basics. Go play with it. Have fun. If you want to learn more about this stuff, let me know. Post a comment down below, and I'll I'll make more flowcharting stuff. Before we go, I'm going to leave you with some of my favorite flowcharts. Feel free to pause the video to enjoy. This was me a few years ago. Not so much now. I've I've got pretty much all the power tools I need. <laughs> this is one of my favorites. This one's been around for years. And of course, there's version 2.0. Oh, someone's beaming in. Can't forget the Trekkies. I know this one's going to upset somebody. It's just for fun, folks. Can't forget the beer flow chart. And finally, how to choose an OS. <laughs> Do you got a favorite flow chart that I didn't have here? Well, post a comment down below and be sure to either link to it or if you're in my forums on my website, just upload it. And while you're on my website, be sure to check out my complete Excel course. I got lots and lots of lessons, cover all kinds of different things, uh, formulas, pivot tables, you name it. But there you go. That's how you build flow charts in Excel. Nice and simple. You don't need any other software. It's probably already on your machine. So that's it. That's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. I'm excited to announce that I'm creating a brand new series of lessons focused on programming in Microsoft Excel VBA. If you've been looking to take your Excel skills to the next level and learn how to automate tasks, write custom macros, and unleash the full power of Excel VBA, these lessons are for you.
Sign up now on my website at the link shown. You'll find a copy in the description down below the video window, and I'll send you more information on this exciting new series. If you'd like to see me make more Excel tech help videos, post a comment down below and say, I want more Excel. The vast majority of my videos are from Microsoft Access, the database program, because that's been my forte for the past three decades or so. However, I love Excel and I'm more than happy to make more videos for Excel and Word and PowerPoint and all the other topics that I teach. As you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, so make your voice heard and let me know you want more Excel videos. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you have down below. I do my best to read them all as soon as I can. And also, be sure to share this video with that person in the office that always asks you Excel questions. Or, you know, that family member, mom, when she calls you and says, hey, I can't do this. Well, send her a copy of one of my videos. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Just click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when I post new videos. If you'd like to become a member of my channel, click the join button down below and you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos and one free beginner lesson every month. Gold members get access to download all the sample spreadsheets that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use and a free expert level Excel course once a month after finishing the beginner lessons. And platinum members get access to all of the previous perks plus all of my full beginner courses and one new developer course every month after finishing the expert levels. If you're watching this video on YouTube and you're looking for the links, click where it says show more down below the video window. YouTube actually does a pretty good job of hiding this thing. You'll see a list of other related videos, other information on the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when I post new videos, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Excel Level 1 course, check it out now. It's absolutely free. It's over 90 minutes long, and it covers all the basics of Microsoft Excel. And like I said before, even if you don't need it, I'm sure you know someone that does. That person that always is asking you Excel questions, well, send them this link. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just a dollar, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. And if you like those, come to my website and I've got tons more lessons for all levels. I cover everything from the basics all the way up to advanced functions and more. And while you're on my website, stop by the Excel forum, post any questions you have and join in the conversation. As always, thanks for learning with ExcelLearningZone.com. I'm Richard Rost. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.